Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on Sail On by Tommy Emanuel. While the top tier patrons roll by, I'm quickly going to point out that only the first part of this lesson will be posted on YouTube. For full access, you can check out my Patreon page. The tab and notation file can be found through the music notes link down below in the description. So today we take a closer look at Ceylon, Tommy Emanuel's tribute to his late brother Phil. Phil Emanuel was known to be a virtuoso and something of a speed monster on the guitar himself. But lucky for us, Tommy's tribute is surprisingly laid back and relatively easy to play. It might even be the ideal entry point into the Tommy Emanuel world for new players, although there is one massive difficulty spike in the song. When I started working on this song, it felt like one of the easiest Tommy Emanuel songs I've ever done, but as soon as I got to the chorus, I was slapped around the ears by one of the biggest chord voicings I've ever seen. So yeah, there is that, but I do provide you with several alternatives. So even if you have smaller hands, you should be able to play the song in full. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and look at the intro and the verse first. All right, straight to playing then. The guitar is in standard tuning. We're using a capo on the second fret. I'll remind you time and time again throughout the tutorial that you have to count up two extra frets uh, and you need a thumb pick. Although I guess in this case, it is perfectly possible to play the whole song without a thumb pick as well. So there is no boom chick bass pattern, no special techniques. If you're not comfortable using the thumb pick, then leave it out, it will sound fine. Let's have a look at the intro first. And in this case, it's just one chord that we're going to repeat over and over again. This is what it sounds like. That's all, it's basically the same thing over and over again, except for the last few notes of each bar. You're starting with an open low E string, pinky, eighth fret on the G string, index finger, third fret on the B string, and then you need an open E string on top as well. That's the first arpeggio. And Tommy always picks thumb pick, thumb pick, or without the pick, it's actually just thumb, thumb, index finger, middle finger on top. Then you drop the pinky and you switch over to the middle finger on the fourth fret on the G string, same arpeggio. Always sticking to the top three strings. Now you keep the middle finger down on the G string and you shift it down to the second fret. You're not really playing a slide, but you're using the same finger for those two notes. If you do this, then you only have to shift one time in position in each bar. So you get middle finger down to the second fret and you drop the pinky on the third fret on the B string where you just had the index finger. Shifting down with the middle finger, adding the pinky again to the open E string on top. And make sure you get this right, just that middle finger down two frets and swapping out the pinky for the index finger that was there before. In that case, you only have to move one time. bar. I've seen versions where people try to shift down using the index finger and then they have to shift one more time to get that last chord. It's not necessary. Just one move, middle finger to the second fret, going for the pinky here. You could use the ring finger as well. And then index finger, first fret on the G string, open E string, open G string, open E string, and back to the first fret. So the last few notes is just index finger, open E string, open G string, open E string, back to the first fret and back to the open E string. Tommy always slows down a little bit in this last section. You just take 
your time all the way at the end. Now, the intro and each interlude is always this part over and over again, but the last few notes always change. So the first time Tommy plays, always back to the high open E string. The second time around, he just plays index finger to the open G E string and back to the index finger without ever using that open E string in between. So this is the second time around. And notice I'm still holding down the pinky. I'll leave that note ringing out as long as possible. And the third time around, he's actually going to re-pick that third fret on the B string because this is what he plays the third time around. So now instead of playing the open, just the open E string or just playing that melody on the G string, now he's going to pick the B string and the E string each and every time, holding down that third fret. And it's different each and every time. There are versions where he plays the same fill over and over again. There are versions where he plays a different fill each and every time. So this is what I transcribed for the intro, the three variations back to back with each other. Just the E string, slowing down, back. Now only G string, no high E string, and now double stops. You can pick whatever you like and just stick to that or play around with the variations as much as you like. One word on the timing, there is a melodic pattern of three and there is a rhythmic pattern of two, so there is a little bit of timing displacement going on. Don't get into the pitfall of playing this as triplets. These are strict 16th notes. So if I count along, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and. So that you get that timing sorted nicely and even in 16th notes. One more time, really slowly through this section, and then we can already move into the verse. Play through the verse one time all the way and I'll see you again on the other side for all the explanation. Lots of repeating parts and this is also the only double verse. So this one is twice as long. Each and every other verse in the song is going to be a bit shorter. But it's all centered around this very first chord shape. Open A string, ring finger, 7th fret on the D string. Remember, always count up two extra frets with the capo. 7th fret, 6th fret with the middle finger and then 4th fret with the index finger. Sounds a bit strange. This is a Lydian chord, sharp 11 would be the correct name, a sharp 11, um, and it sort of evokes a very dreamy atmosphere. Uh, and the arpeggio just goes straight down all the way to the open A string. So A string, D string, G string, B string, E string. 
Then you add the pinky to the seventh fret on the B string. You plug that one. Now this might mess with your brain in the beginning. You're returning to a thicker string. Your fingers or your brain or your ears are going to expect a lower pitch than a higher pitch. But this is in fact the opposite. E string, B string sounds higher and then back to the open E string. Tommy actually lets go of the index finger when he frets the pinky and then drops back the index finger down because you will need that note again in a second. See, you have to turn back to that fourth fret. But if you can, you can also just let it down. This is what I'm going to do throughout the whole tutorial. If the stretch is too much, Tommy just lets go and then turns back to the fourth fret with the index finger. The full arpeggio is down to the open A string, dropping down the pinky, B string, back to the open E string, and then you remove the pinky and you pick the B string again, fourth fret with the index finger. That's the full arpeggio. Sounds a bit tense if you do it slow that D sharp and E in there are really tense if you play them together. Once the arpeggio flows, it will sound really nice. Picking. Again, Tommy only uses the index finger and the middle finger on the top strings. Everything else is thumb pick. So thumb pick, thumb pick, thumb pick, index, middle, index, middle, index. That is the picking hand pattern. And now the tricky part. While holding everything down, you're going to perform a pull off to the open B string with the index finger. As you land that pull off on the open string, you're going to play an open A bass string at the exact same time. off to the open B string, you land that A string at the exact same time. This might take some time in the beginning. That is what you're going for. Make sure you time it out exactly right when doing it slow and then when once you pick up the speed, it will come together before you know it. Now just two more things before we conclude this bar. Pick with the index finger, 6th fret on the G string, you're still holding this down, and then with the nails a soft strum across let's say the G string, B string and E string. And that is the full first bar. That is what you're going for. That is what you're going for. And then depending on what you're going to do in the next bar, repeat this or move to the next chord. The first time you just play a low E string, open, and you're going to repeat the exact same thing. So the first bar. Strum, E string. And the second time, you're not playing that open E string again, you're doubling up that strumming, maybe one or two extra strums all the way at the end, and then we're going to move over to the D chord. So one more time, those first two bars. strumming just one time or two times down, just two chords, four and, or you can double up, four and with an extra upstroke at the end. Whether you'll be able to do this will be dictated by how fast you can switch to the next chord, the, the D chord. And this is probably going to be the first chord where we are going to have to solve some problems for some people. This is what it sounds like. See, it's that slide what I'm talking about. So you start, open the E string, 
ring finger on the seventh fret together with a pinky on the seventh fret G string and B string. So open the E string, double stop, two strings at the same time and you're going to slide up to the ninth fret. While you hold this down, you reach with the index finger for the fifth fret on the high E string. Now this is probably already tricky for some people. We're going to make it even trickier, but no worries, I'm going to show you an alternative in just a second. So slide up, fifth fret, adding the middle finger on the seventh fret on the high E string while keeping everything else down and then pulling off back to the fifth fret. And we're not done. As you perform that pull off to the fifth fret, again, we're going to land an open D bass string underneath that. Exactly the same timing as in the A chord. See? So as you perform that pull off from the seventh fret to the fifth fret, open D string underneath there. And then after that bass note, you re-pick the ninth fret on the B string. You're still holding this down with the pinky. And then open E string and open D string at the same time. And this is where I'm going to take a quick break in the middle of this bar to show you the alternative. So one more time, Tommy's original version. You can already see me move down. That is what we're going to do. We're just going to move that ring finger and pinky down two frets again to the seventh fret. But we start by picking those two open strings, D string and E string. Now, if that slide is too much, if the slide isn't too much and the hammer on and pull off is too much, then there is an alternative. Instead of moving to the seventh fret, we're going to move to the second fret index finger, second fret on the high E string, middle finger, third fret on the B string. It's the exact same thing as we're playing here. As always, when we do these alternatives, there is something you're going to lose. That overlapping effect up here, that is going to be lost. But if that allows you to play the song in full, then just have a look at this. We're going to do the same thing. Play that double stop, slide up two frets, then add the ring finger on the 5th fret and the pinky on the 7th fret. And we have the same melody. And then if you're ambitious, as you pull off, again, you can play that same open D bass string down below. Exactly the same thing. Back to the index finger, 4th fret. And then we can use those two open strings. We're ending up on the exact same thing. Open the E string, open E string to switch back to the seventh fret. And now we're going to stick to Tommy's original fingering. The hard part, the big stretch is over. So either you have Tommy's original version. Or the alternative. Alternative is a little bit easier to play. You don't have that big stretch, but you are losing that overlapping sound. See what you like best. I'm going to stick to Tommy's original fingering for the rest of the tutorial. Then you repick the double stop, seventh fret, G string and B string, still holding this down, and you add the index finger to the fifth fret, high E string. Pinky shifts over to the seventh fret on the high E string, and then we're going to move up two frets to an A chord voicing with an open B string in between there. So you get open A string, index finger, seventh fret on the D string, ring finger, ninth fret on the G string, open B string, pinky, ninth fret on the high E string. With that open B string in between there. Just that connection really quickly. And now 
we're just arpeggiating up and down. We're only going to play this bar one time in the entire song. From the next verse on, it's going to be gone. So what we're doing is we're playing the high E string, ninth fret, and the open A string together at the same time. And now we're just going to arpeggiate up and down without re-picking the open A string. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it's basically just thumb pick, thumb pick on the D string and G string, just going up and down. D string, G string, B string, E string, and back down. It sounds trickier than it is because of that open B string. If I just leave out the left hand, this is what we're doing. Again, make sure that you get the timing right. These aren't triplets. One and two and three and four and. So don't count them as one, two, three, four. Common mistake to make, but it is trickier or it sounds trickier than it is because of that chord voicing you're using. Picking pattern is you have to watch out for one thing. When you come back down, so you get thumb, thumb, index, middle, index, index to the G string. So you're not reversing the picking pattern with the thumb pick two, you're just playing thumb, thumb, index, middle, index, index, thumb, thumb, index, middle, index, index. So when you come back, you play both the B string and the G string with the index finger. All the way at the end of that arpeggio, there are versions where Tommy plays that high C sharp, if you can indicate both D sharp, at the very last part. I like to play an open E string because that sort of masks our transition back into the next open chord, which is again that first A chord we started out with. So see what you like. Tommy sometimes plays this. One and two. have to let go really quickly of that high C sharp to move into the next chord. Uh, let me make that connection. One and two and three and four and one. See, and you have to let go of that top note really quickly. I like an open E string in that place because it sort of masks the transition into the next chord. So I'm going to play the exact same thing, only that very last note with the pinky is going to be replaced by an open E string. One and two and three and four and one, two. See, and I just like that transition a lot better, but I've included what Tommy plays as well. Let me make the connection. Tommy's original fingering to that A chord. And straight into the next part. Maybe one more time with the alternative too. There you are, those were the first four bars. You can basically play almost half of the song now. Uh, I'm going to play through those first four bars one more time and then the next section is already going to be mostly repetition. So again, the first four bars.
So that is part one of the lesson. You can now play the intro, which is used in the chorus as well, and the first half of the first verse. You already have more than half of the song in your fingers, but the real challenge, that big chord in the chorus, is still waiting for you. I'll see you in part two. Thank you. 